In this video, we will look at how to find the Thevenin equivalent of a circuit containing independent sources only. This is the given circuit of interest which has an independent voltage source and an independent current source. This is the 5 ohm load resistor connected between the terminals of interest A and B. In order to find the Thevenin equivalent, we need to find both the Thevenin voltage and the Thevenin resistance. In order to find the Thevenin voltage, we need to remove the load resistor and then find the open circuit voltage between the terminals. Let's see how we can do this. This is the circuit of interest obtained by removing the load resistor and now the open circuit voltage between terminals A and B is the voltage V Thevenin that we wish to find. Any circuit analysis method can be used to find V Thevenin. Here we are going to use node voltage method. The main steps in applying the node voltage method are shown here. So we start by identifying the ground node and then we only have one essential node left in the circuit. Suppose we denote that as Vz. Now we need to assume branch current directions. Suppose we assume these current directions. And now we can apply Kirchhoff current law to this node. So the branch current through the 10 ohm resistor is Vz minus 60 over 10. The branch current through the 40 ohm resistor is Vz minus 0 over 40. The branch current through the 8 ohm resistor can be determined as follows. This 8 ohm resistor is in series with the current source. Therefore, it must carry the same current. And we can see that our assumed branch current direction is opposite to the direction of the current source. So this gives minus 4 is equal to 0. This is a single equation with a single unknown. And it can be solved to show that Vz is 80 volts. This completes the node voltage method. But we still need to find V Thevenin. And this can be done using the node voltage Vz as follows. Recall that the node voltage is defined as a voltage rise with respect to ground. Therefore, this voltage Vz we can represent with this polarity as follows. So plus minus Vz. Then we have the 8 ohm resistor. And then we have the terminals of interest A and B. So suppose we represent the voltage here A, B and this is the voltage V Thevenin that we are interested in finding. This 8 ohm resistor will carry the 4 ampere current and this current will be flowing through this resistor in this direction. So that means this current we can assume, uh, we can take as 4 amps and this is the polarity of the voltage drop across this 8 ohm resistor. Now we can apply Kirchhoff voltage law and find V Thevenin. So we can assume clockwise or anti-clockwise direction to help apply Kirchhoff voltage law. It does not make any difference. Suppose we assume this direction. Then going from minus to plus is a voltage rise. So we get minus Vz. Going from minus to plus is another voltage rise. So we get minus 8 times 4, which is the voltage drop across this resistor. And then going from plus to minus is a voltage drop. And this is written with a positive sign. So this comes plus V Thevenin is equal to 0. We already know the value of Vz. So substituting, we can show that 
V Thevenin is 80 plus 8 times 4. This comes out 112 volts. So the open circuit voltage here is 112 volts. We can also use mesh current method to find the Thevenin voltage. So again, first we remove the load resistor and our interest is to find this open circuit voltage, which is V Thevenin. We can use mesh current as follows. So we, in this circuit, we have two meshes. So suppose we assign this direction I1 and suppose we assign this direction I2. Applying the mesh current method, we can see that this independent current source is present in only this mesh. Therefore, the mesh current is equal to the current source magnitude. So we can write I1 is equal to 4 amps. It is equal to 4 amps because mesh I1 current is flowing in the same direction as the current source. For mesh 2, we can write the Kirchhoff, we can apply the Kirchhoff voltage law. So this gives going from minus to plus is a voltage rise. So this is minus 60. And then through the 10 ohm resistor, we can see that both I1 and I2 are flowing. But since we are writing the equation for mesh 2, we give precedence to the direction of the current I2. So this voltage drop is 10 I2 minus I1. And then through the 40 ohm resistor, the voltage drop is 40 I2. This is equal to 0. Substituting the value of I1 in this equation, we can solve for I2 and I2 comes out 2 amps. So this completes the mesh current analysis. We still need to find V Thevenin and this can be done using the mesh currents as follows. Following the direction of this mesh current, we can see that this current enters the 40 ohm resistor here. So this is assigned a positive polarity and leaves here. So this is a negative polarity. Similarly, I1 is entering the resistor here, leaving here. The end where the current enters is assumed to be at higher potential. And the end where the current leaves is assumed to be lower potential. Therefore, we can assign this polarity up to the voltage drop across the 8 ohm resistor. Now we can see that going from here to here, the two voltage drops are adding up. We have minus plus minus plus. These voltage drops add up. Therefore, V Thevenin is 8 times I1 plus 40 times I2. And by substituting the values, we get 8 times 4 plus 40 times 2. And this comes out 112 volts as before. So the main conclusion is any circuit analysis technique can be used to find the open circuit voltage, which is V Thevenin. After finding V Thevenin, we have to find the Thevenin resistance R Thevenin next. In order to do this, since the given circuit has independent sources only, we can use either the circuit analysis method or the method of deactivating independent sources. First, let's use the circuit analysis method to find uh, the Thevenin resistance. We have already found V Thevenin as 112 volts. In order to find R Thevenin, we need to short circuit the terminals of interest and then find this short circuit current. And then R Thevenin is given by V Thevenin over I short circuit. In order to find the short circuit current, any circuit analysis technique can be used. Here, let's use node voltage method. 
So we can ground this essential node and then we only have one essential node of interest. And let's assume branch currents flowing away from the node. Applying Kirchhoff current law to this node, we get Vx minus 60 over 10 and then Vx minus 0 over 40 and then this branch current, the voltage since A and B are now short circuited, the voltage at A is the same as voltage at B which is grounded. So this branch current is Vx minus 0 over 8. So we get Vx minus 0 over 8. This equation has only one unknown. So it can be solved to show that Vx comes out 24 volts. Now we need to find the short circuit current and we can do that using the node voltage as follows. Let's apply Kirchhoff current law to node A. So we note the one branch current entering the node and this branch current is 4 amps because of this independent current source. We need to find this branch current, let's call it I1 and then the third branch current is I short circuit. So this current I1 can be found by using Ohm's law. So I1 is Vx minus 0 over 8. So this is equal to 3 amps. Now we can apply Kirchhoff current law to node A. Sum of currents entering is equal to sum of currents leaving. So this means I short circuit is I1 plus 4 because these two currents are entering the node and substituting the values we get 7 amps. Finally, R Thevenin is then given by V Thevenin over I short circuit and this comes out 112 over 7 is 16 ohm. So this shows how to use circuit analysis method to find R Thevenin for circuits containing independent sources only. Next, let's use method of deactivating independent sources to find R Thevenin. According to this method, first we need to deactivate the independent voltage and current sources. We do this by replacing the independent voltage source by a short circuit and replacing the independent current source by an open circuit. So we can redraw the circuit as follows. We zero out the independent voltage source. We leave the resistors as is. And then we open circuit the current source. And these are the terminals of interest. So we are looking from here, the terminals of interest. And we want to find the equivalent resistance seen looking into these terminals. So this is done by combining the resistors from the far end back towards the input terminals and this is done using simple series parallel combination of resistors. So here we can see that the 10 ohm is in parallel with 40 ohm and then the equivalent resistor that represents this combination is in series with 8 ohm resistor. So we can write R Thevenin as 8 plus 10 parallel 40 and then this can be evaluated as follows. So we use the formula to find the equivalent resistance of two resistors connected in parallel and this simplifies to 16 ohm. So this shows how to use the method of deactivating independent sources to find R Thevenin. The summary result is shown here. 
This is the original circuit of interest with the 5 ohm resistor being the load resistor. By removing the load resistor, we obtain this circuit of interest. And by analyzing this circuit, we have shown that V Thevenin is 112 volts and R Thevenin is 16 ohm. These two circuits are equivalent. So what that means is from the point of view of terminals A and B, we can, this circuit is equivalent to this circuit. So for instance, if we are interested in finding the voltage and current through the 5 ohm resistor, instead of using the original circuit, we can use the Thevenin equivalent circuit. We can replace the 5 ohm resistor back here. And now this is very simple to analyze. We have one voltage source in series with two resistors which are forming a voltage divider. So we can find the current. So the current is the voltage divided by the resistance. And substituting the values, uh, we get this value which is equal to 5.33 amps. And now if we are interested in finding the power dissipated in this resistor, we can find the power as I squared R and this comes out as 142.22 Watt. The advantage of the Thevenin equivalent circuit is the simplicity in the analysis from the point of view of using different load resistors. We can verify our analysis using LTSpice. This is the same circuit constructed in LTSpice. And by running this schematic and bringing the cursor over the load resistor, we can see in the bottom left corner that the power dissipation is 142.22 watts, which confirms the solution.